Hello, in this tutorial we're going to expand our game by showing the position of the ship on the screen. So we're going to add a label to the screen and start with creating our heads up display or our HUD. Now in order to do this we're going to actually have to make use of a new reference. The Sony development environment has a playstation.highlevel.ui and UI stands for user interface. So we want to make use of that reference and that's really easy to do. We talked about this in an earlier tutorial but we've got all of these different references and then each one of these is referred to in the using statements and so if you want to add a new reference if somebody has given you a code library that you'd like to make use of you can just right click on the references underneath your project and we'll be able to edit these and you can see all of the available references to you right so we've actually got a physics 2d physics package that we can use we've got a high level model and a game engine 2d and these are really really useful if you go deep and explore the playstation mobile sdk then these are really useful to to explore for now we're going to actually make use of this high level ui and keep things a bit simple we're just going to make a label on the screen so we're going to go with that so just make sure that that's checked on and then click OK and what that does is it adds that reference to our project. So now in addition to the PlayStation.core, we've got the PlayStation.HighLevel UI. Okay? Now in addition to adding that reference into our project, we need to make use of it using this using statement. So we'll add that to the top here and it will be sce.playstation.core. Oh, sorry, it's PlayStation dot high level dot UI okay and if you were to just compile this it would compile fine and we're making use of the reference we're just not actually doing anything with it yet so let's do that now inside of our main application I'm going to add a new variable it's going to be a private static label and I'll call that L and then inside of my initialize what I'd like to do is set up this label and get everything ready to go. Now if we run this right now you'll see that we get a warning that says that we're not actually making use of this label so we're defining a variable but we're not actually making use of it so we need to add that in and we'll actually do that in the initialize section here. So what I'd like to do is in addition to creating my graphics context in my ship what I need to do is I need to set up this UI system so UI system dot initialize and I want to make use of the graphics variable so I'm telling the UI system or the user interface system that I need to initialize it and I want to point it to the graphics context that we have and what this means is now I can create a scene and uh, so it's capital S scene and what that's going to do is allow me to add labels and other UI or user interface elements into the scene so I'm going to call this scene lowercase s scene is of type scene and that's equal to a new scene okay and then I'm going to create the label is equal to a new label so L is equal to a new label I can position the label and I want to put it in the upper left so the X and the Y position are going to be 10 and 10. I'm going to set the width of my label. Uh, we'll set that pretty wide. That way I can add any amount of text that I'd like there. And I'm going to set the text to be uh, hello from Sony. Okay, so you've got all these properties that the label has. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this label. I'm going to then set its position and its width and the text that's to be displayed. And then I'm going to actually add this label into the scene. So I've got my scene. I've got a root, what's called a root widget. And widgets are labels and buttons and so forth. So the root widget is the base of the scene. And I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to call this add child last. And I'm going to add the label as the last child of the root widget. And all this does is it's going to add this label into the scene. Okay, and so I've got UI system. I'm going to set the active scene to be the scene that I just created. All right, and then the next parameter is just going to be null there, meaning nothing. So I'm going to create this new scene. I'm going to add my label into the scene. And then I'm going to set the active system. I'm going to set the active scene of the UI system to be the scene that I just created. 
Now the last thing I need to do is I need to tell the scene to render itself. So after I render the ship, I'm going to tell the UI system to render itself. Okay, and let's run this. And what we'll get is our ship that we had before, but now we've got our label. And what it's doing is it's saying, look, for the UI system, I want you to render yourself, and it's going to take whatever the active scene is, and it's going to render all of the elements within that scene. Now, within this scene, we only have one label, and the label's text is Hello from Sony. And you can see that the label is actually drawn above the ship, so the ship appears below that label. And that's because we told the ship to render itself, and then we told the UI system to render itself. So look what happens if we place the UI system render, or to render the scene above the ship. Meaning I'm gonna render the UI first, and then I'm gonna render the ship. So let's run this and see what we get now. Okay, so everything looks the same, but if I bring the ship over here, notice the ship is on top of that label. So it depends you know, it's very important, and what is rendered is dependent upon the order in which you call the render. So I'd like my HUD, or my heads up display, to be on top. So I'm going to render that last. So the UI system.render should be at the end here. Okay, now I don't want to just say hello from Sony at every frame. What I'd like to do is actually display the ship's position. So we'll go into the update function now, and we'll set the label the text element of this label to be equal to, uh, let's say, some position information. All right, so we've got our label here that we defined, right, and we called it L. You could rename this to be something else, but I'm going to set the text just like I did here where it says hello from Sony. I'm going to set the text of this label to be position is equal to, now that's a string, because I've got this in double quotes, right? So the text is going to be position, and to that I want to append the x position of the ship. So I can just use the plus operator to take two strings and, and plug them together. Now you might think, well, this x, this is, uh, what is this? This, you know, this is the x position of the ship. What I'd like to do is say, look, you've got this ship, and you've got a particular x and a y position, and I want to show that position on the screen. Right, so I'm going to add to that um, kind of the position equals and then the x value wherever the ship is. I'm going to use this colon to separate out the y. And then I'm going to have the ship's y value there. Now you'll notice that the x and the y don't actually exist. So if we were to run this, we're going to get an error right now. It's going to say, look, this uh, ship doesn't contain x and y. This doesn't work. So let's go into our ship. And we don't have an X and Y, we have a position of the sprite, and that has an X and a Y component. So let's actually create an X and a Y accessor now at the ship level. Now we've got a bit of a problem because you'll notice that the sprite that maintains the position is private. We don't want anybody messing with that sprite. It makes sense to keep that private. But what we need based on this app main is we need the ability to know where the X and the Y values are uh, of the ship. So we need to know these values. So we can create something that's public and it's going to be a float, right? Because the X and the Y position of this are floating values and you can tell this, right? By doing a mouse over on the X or the Y and you can see field float X. That tells me that the position vector that holds the information about the sprite is actually of type float. So what I'd like to do is make that float public, and a float means that it's a floating point or a decimal value. Uh, integer meaning we've got an integer value for a number, and then float is the data type that stores a decimal or a floating point number. And what I'd like to do is create something like float x that allows the user to get access to this value inside the ship. And I'll need the same thing for the Y value. So these are capital X and capital Y. Now then the question is, I want to associate this float X and this float Y with the position information of the sprite itself. So what I'm gonna do is create an accessor. It's very syntactically easy to do. I'm just going to take this float X and float Y and create curly brackets underneath it immediately, so make sure you get rid of those semicolons there. And then I've got a get and a set. Now in this case we don't need the set because I don't want you to be able to change it, I just want you to be able to read it. So the get code tells me 
if somebody asks what this value x is, then run this code here. Or if somebody asks what the value of y is, run this code here. And I'm just gonna simply return, and return is a way of taking a value and giving it back to whoever's asking. So I'm gonna return s, which is the sprite, position dot x. Real simple. If somebody asks me what the x position of the ship is, I'm gonna return the x value of the position of the sprite. So this is a way of getting access to the x and y information stored privately inside of the ship. And you can do this with anything. If I wanna create a public accessor for a variable, I just mark it as public and give it a data type and a name. And then I use this get and any code that I want to run when you ask me what is this value is gonna be placed inside of the curly brackets here. So the same kind of code goes for the Y. If you ask me what the Y position of the ship is, I'm gonna to return to you the Y value of the position of the sprite. So it's acting as kind of a pass through here. Okay, now that we've fixed that in the ship, we have this public X and public Y. And so now if we go here, I can use ship.x and ship.y and that should work just fine. So let's rerun this, our error goes away, and now the position information is displayed as that labels text. And as I move around the ship, then you can see the X and the Y position are changing. Now this works because every time I update my main game, I'm going to update the text, and it's asking the ship, what is your X and your Y position every time the main game loop runs? And that information is stored here, and it's getting the position X and position Y off of that sprite. Now notice when I move around, I'm adjusting the X and the Y position of that sprite with the buttons being pressed. And so this text property of the label is gonna be changed every time the ship is changed. All right, so let's run that again and see how it works. And here we have the ability to move the ship around. The label is being updated. And again, the label is being drawn last, so it will appear on top of the ship. And so that gives you an opportunity to see how we can bring in, in this case, a new reference, the highlevel.ui, code that was already written for us. At the top of our main application, we're going to use the using statement and bring in that high-level UI. Then what we did was we added a label to our project and initialized it with the values, creating a new scene and adding that label into the scene. We could add multiple labels and buttons and so forth into that scene, and we'll do that in a little bit. And then when I tell the main game to render itself, I just need to make sure that I render the active scene in the UI system. The final thing we did was inside of the ship class, we created two new accessors, public X and public Y, and used the get pattern to make sure that if somebody asks me what the X and the Y value of my ship is, I'm gonna return the X and the Y values of the position of that sprite. And that'll do it for this tutorial.